Hey, this is Joe from Home Studio Corner. What's the best type of microphone for vocals? Typically, your two options are a dynamic microphone, like this PD-70 from Personas, or an SM57, 58 from Shure, or a condenser microphone, like this one that I'm speaking into now, or like this Roswell Mini K87, K47, uh, all great microphones. So if we had to choose between the two, how do we make that decision, and is one categorically better than the other. Let's talk about that today. I've covered this topic before, but it's so important. And honestly, as of just in the last few months, my thinking on this has evolved a bit. So we're going to talk about that today and listen to some tracks here a little bit later in the video. Uh, by the way, if you if you like watching my videos and you trust me a little bit and you want to know my gear recommendations, I put together a gear guide that includes some things like microphones and also things like interfaces and a few other things. They're absolutely free. Just go to homestudiocorner.com slash gear to check that out. Okay, let's dive in. Extremely briefly, what's the main difference between dynamics and condensers. Condensers are powered, dynamics are not. So this doesn't require any electricity. It has a magnet and some wire, and when the sound moves the magnet a little bit, that creates a little bit of electricity that comes out, and that's our signal. With a condenser, you send phantom power, usually, to the microphone through the cable. That charges a metal plate that you can kind of see if you look through the grate here, and that metal plate being charged um, is fairly sensitive and hears sound a little bit better in a sense. But that actually leads us to our first question. Since this one seems to be fancier and have more technology, is a condenser microphone just straight up better than a dynamic? And the answer is no. So mechanical differences aside, what do they sound like? Well, a condenser microphone typically has a greater frequency response, so it picks up more highs and more lows than a dynamic, and it also tends to pick up a little more detail. So you hear that and you say, well, shoot, shouldn't we always use a condenser? Not necessarily. Does that make a condenser just categorically better than a dynamic? No, not necessarily. A dynamic now, this will, some will argue that I'm, this isn't accurate, but to me, a dynamic is a more natural sound. If you put a dynamic on my voice and a condenser on my voice, the condenser is going to sound a little more exaggerated in both the low end and the top end, whereas the dynamic is going to sound a little more, a little warmer, a little more rolled off. A great example is, we'll talk about this a little bit more, but the sibilance of my voice, the S's and T's. If you were sitting here across from me, you would hear the S's when I say things like across from me, but they wouldn't be super, super loud, right? Sometimes when using condenser microphones, those S's get exaggerated and become really, really bright. That might be a good thing depending on what you're trying to do with a vocal in a mix, but it's not necessarily accurate. So don't fall into the trap of saying condenser better than dynamic. They're two different tools, just like I love pencils and I love pens. And there are situations where ink makes more sense and there are situations where using graphite and a wooden pencil makes more sense. They're two tools for different jobs. When digital audio came along, we had just come off of several decades of recording to analog tape through big honking consoles. And that has its own sound, right? Um, you're running signal through a lot of iron, through a lot of tubes, onto a physical medium analog tape, and that has a sound to it. It's fairly high definition, but not nearly as clear and pristine as a digital system. So when digital systems started to become mainstream, one of the first pieces of feedback people got was it sounded cold and sterile. What they really meant was it sounded accurate. Right? It was recording, it was capturing all the frequencies, and we weren't used to hearing that because all the gear that we had used up to that point did stuff to the sound, and we became used to that sound. That's something that can plague home studio owners because we're necessarily in a digital system, and if we use nice, clear, pristine, high quality condenser microphones, sometimes all that clarity can become too much clarity. So if I'm using a condenser and it's got this nice, like I mentioned before, it's picking up those high frequencies super well. What if I do that times, you know, 20 tracks of audio? If they all have a little excessive top end, then when I combine all of those together, that might sound super excessive on the top end. And of course, we can do things like use EQ later on in the mix to tame some of that. But a lot of times, if we want to get it right at the source, which I say all the time, that might mean, hey, this is just coming across really bright, no matter where I place the microphone. Let's try a dynamic, or maybe even a ribbon microphone, which is sort of kind of a type of dynamic 
to a degree, um, to get capture a darker, less exaggerated sound, and that might be perfect. That doesn't mean I don't want you to think that condensers are the bad guy in this situation. It's just that the clarity that we get from a condenser going into a digital converter, there's just a lot of potential clarity there. And sometimes clarity isn't the best thing. It's more about capturing a vibe versus capturing every frequency perfectly. Last year, my band released our first EP. The band's called Stare Down. The EP is just called Stare Down EP. And I recorded all the vocals with this dynamic microphone. Again, a PD-70 from Personas. Um, but it could have been a an SM57, could have been an SM7B, I've got one back there somewhere. Um, but this is the one that I chose, and it was more than just because of the sound. And I think that's something that I'm starting to realize even more. You've heard the stories of Bono recording vocals for U2, how he allegedly uses an SM58, so this with the more of a pop filter on the top, and literally just sings his vocals like he's doing a live show in the studio. Well, when I was doing like the scratch vocals for this album, I used this microphone because it was just sitting right here. I just grabbed it and I sang. And there was something about the feel of those vocals that I attributed to at least partly this microphone. So yes, part of it is the sound, the little bit darker, more focused sound of a dynamic microphone, but a big, huge part of it had nothing to do with the sound at all. It was the feel for me as a singer. So I, I sing a lot in the studios, in the studio, but that comes in seasons. So there are seasons where I'm singing a lot and there are seasons where I'm not. But almost every week I am singing at my church on a dynamic microphone in front of a group of people. Um, so I'm used to putting my lips onto a mic and singing into it. And I realized so there's something about as soon as my lips touch the microphone that puts me in a different, I tend to close my eyes like I'm doing now, um, and puts me in a different place. And I perform differently because I have kind of that anchor of putting my lips on the microphone. I remember the first time I sang into like a nice handheld microphone, um, someone came to do like a presentation at my school. I was in junior high, I think and they were singing, they were doing a concert, and they invited me down to sing, and he hands me the mic and says, hey, just put this on your bottom lip and then sing. It was just a cool instruction. It probably he just didn't want me to like hold it in front of the speaker and cause feedback, but ever since, when I put my mouth onto a microphone, there's downsides to being that close to the mic, although this microphone, the capsule's actually back in here, it's not on the end, and then this gives it more separation, but it was more that feel of when I put my mouth up onto a microphone, I'm in performance mode differently than I am with a studio microphone and even using something like a pop filter. These are typically what you pair with a condenser when you're singing straight into it, but this just doesn't feel the same as this. For one thing, this is more bendy and tends to move if I push into it, so it's really, I just barely touch it like with my nose and my chin, um, and it's fine, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's a different feel than when I mash my mouth up against a dynamic microphone and really perform the song. That may not be appropriate for every song, and I'm not saying that the key to great vocals is to always use a dynamic that you can mash your lips up against, because there's downsides to that as well, but there's a feel component there that I felt led drawn to with this microphone versus, let's say, this one. I actually tried singing on this one. I said, no, I just really like the vibe that I captured with this one, and so I just rolled with it. So let's listen to the vocal. So this is a vocal from that EP. The top green one here is that dynamic microphone. The bottom is a condenser on a previous project. Um, I think it's like a Roswell, uh, like a mini K47, if I had to guess. Um, I want to just play them for you because it's surprising to me the differences between the two. And what I'll do is the one that's playing will be the one in color. Um, so I'll switch them back and forth like this. So when you see it lit up in color, the green is the dynamic, the yellow is the condenser. Let's just listen for a second. Trudging the cadence along and the ending it feels all wrong and I need to stop listening to voices in my head. You always expect, at least I do, I expect to hear an excessive amount of brightness in the condenser compared to the dynamic. And that's not necessarily true. It's actually the condenser has more lows and highs than the dynamic. But it's more the lows and the low mids and that full warmth that you hear and feel 
more than just the crispiness on the top end. But if you listen again to the dynamic, you'll hear the top end kind of ends above like five, six, seven K. Trudging the cadence along it. It still has crispness and brightness to it, but if you listen now to the condenser, there's like an extra air at the top. I need to stop. You can hear it on stop. There's like a high-end frequency thing there. So for some things, if it's going to be a ballad with a female vocalist and I want a nice, crisp, airy vocal, then I'm probably going to reach for a condenser. Um, but I, I would say don't only assume that you need dynamics for rock vocals. They can work great in lots of different situations. So what I would recommend, if you can only have one microphone, then I'd probably make it a large diaphragm condenser. But more than that, if you, say, want to spend 600 bucks on a condenser, I would say spend a couple hundred bucks on a dynamic and then spend the rest on maybe a slightly less expensive condenser so now you have both and be in the habit of regularly trying out both in different situations even on things like acoustic guitar you'll be surprised the situations where a dynamic might make more sense all right that's it for this video thanks so much for watching if you want to check out my gear guide and see some of my picks for gear, especially if you're starting out in the home recording world. You can have that for free. Just go to homestudiocorner.com slash guide. Thanks for watching. See ya.